Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you all about how you can make a beautiful personalized serving board. This is awesome for holidays, for gifts, and any type of event. So stay tuned so you can learn to make one too. So we're making a personalized cutting board and let's talk about what supplies you'll need for this. It's a very simple project so luckily the supplies list is pretty short. You'll need a pair of scissors. Tweezers are really handy if you have them. A roll of transfer tape and black permanent vinyl or whatever color of permanent vinyl you prefer. And then you'll also need a cutting board. This one was five dollars in Target's dollar spot and it's a really nice sized one so I would definitely recommend checking out um, Target. There's a ton of different places that you can find them pretty inexpensively. Here is our Target cutting board and what we're gonna do is measure it so that way we can make sure that our design will fit with tons of space on this so I'm just gonna take a look and really measure this. I don't want to have the design go above this line here so let's see this is about I would say around 10 inches in length by approximately seven and a half so we have to keep that in mind when we're designing this we want to inset this just a little bit we don't want the design running over the edges so keep that in mind when we're designing we don't want to make the design any larger than that and probably keep an inch gap or a half inch gap um, around the top and bottom and maybe a half inch in so Let's go to the design board and figure out what we're gonna make. Okay guys, we're inside the desktop version of Cricut Design Space. If you're following along at home and using a phone or a tablet, it'll have the same screen for a new project, except the all the toolbars along the sides and the top will be along the bottom of the screen. So when you're looking for this, just check under the edit or the actions um, tabs and those will be the areas that you'll see most of these um, to work with. So we're going to start out by selecting an image for this and this is actually something that I'm making as a gift for a friend and she's going to display this in her kitchen and she's really great at cooking so I thought this would be perfect. She has kind of a farmhouse style home so we're searching for the word farmhouse and it brought up a bunch of different results. And this is the one that really stuck out to me. Um, I thought this would be lovely and we want to send good wishes to her for her new space. So I thought bless this farmhouse would be perfect. And I'm going to insert the image. I pre-measured the um, board that we're working with and it's approximately 10 by um, I believe 7 inches so we just have to make sure that we adjust the sizing for this. So when it sends it to the mat it sends it automatically as a specific size but you can always adjust it, the colors, the sizing, all of that. So if you're using a desktop computer you can drag and click um, the corner and it will adjust the sizing. Or you can, if you're using a phone or a tablet, just select it with your finger. Or you can also draw a box around it and drag and click on the sides. It's a little bit more difficult to get the sizing exactly what you want on the phone and the tablet. So I always recommend going to the bottom of the screen um, in the, I believe, the edit panel. And you can go into selecting the size. So on the desktop, you can select the sizing up here if you want to have a very specific size. And that's just a great way to do it. So I'm going to make this so it has a little bit of a border around the outside of it. So I'm dragging this. As we know, in lengthwise, it's 10 inches and there's approximately 7 inches um, for this direction. So I want to make sure I keep it under there, um, under that 10 inch um, width mark. So that way I have plenty of space around it. And I find it just it makes it look nicer visually. So I'm going to keep it right around... I would see nine and a quarter somewhere there. So that looks pretty good and we can adjust the colors. You can go next to where the line type is. There's a little box and you can always um, select whichever color you want to use. I'm using black for this one because I really think it'll look nice with the wood. So this is ready to go. All we have to do is go click make it. You'll find that button on the very bottom right hand corner of the screen if you're using a phone or a tablet. It'll bring you to the project page here for cutting and this is going to be, um, we don't have to do any alterations to that so we can leave that there. If you needed to move, um, add like different materials on the mat for other projects, you can always move this around and that way you can um, set your project's materials in different sections. But we're only using one type of 
uh, vinyl for this, so we're going to select continue. You can set the material using your favorites. Anything that you mark with the star will be a favorite. Or you can browse through all the materials and search. I'm going to be using permanent vinyl, so I'm just going to select vinyl. And we're going to load the tools that we're going to use, the fine point blade and the material. So let's get started. So we're going to load our mat. You can use the standard grip mat um, for permanent vinyl. You can also use the blue light grip mat for a lot of different types of vinyl. I just tend to pick the standard grip mat for working with vinyl in general. And you just want to make sure that you smooth it down so that it's adhering as well as possible. It looks like I'm going to have to scoot this over just slightly. Now remember there is a gap um, about a quarter of an inch around the outside part of the mat where the lines are where it's not going to cut anyway so it doesn't have to be perfect but you want it to be approximately where it belongs. So let's get the machine here and we'll load it to get cut. I'm just going to open our machine. It's already turned on and ready to go. Make sure to select what material you're working with. We're working with the premium uh, permanent outdoor vinyl. I'm just loading this into the machine. And then we're going to press go for it to start cutting. Okay, we're going to unload it. Close up our machine. There are a couple different ways that you can weed this. You can go through and leave it on the mat itself to help you weed it, or you can remove it if you're going to work with it and you want more flexibility. So to remove it, you just turn your mat over and then you just roll your mat away from your design. Let's bring you guys in closer for a better look at what we're working with. There is a little bit of extra vinyl, so I'm going to cut that off so we can save it for another project. You can always use that, the scraps for smaller projects, so I recommend cutting away the excess whenever possible. If you guys want to see project ideas for scraps, leave a comment below and that way I know you guys are interested in that sort of thing. So here we are and you might be able to see it in the light. There's the cutout right there so you can see the design. So there's a different couple different ways that you can um, weed this. You can use tools, you can use your hands. Something to keep in mind is whenever you're working with permanent vinyl, it is very, very sticky and more likely to get stuck to itself. So always work slowly with this. I'm going to flip this around. There's a very long piece here that's more likely to um, have problems getting removed. So I'm flipping this around so that we're working from this direction. That way it goes in the direction of where that little swirl is. So I'm just going to choose a corner here. And there you can use weeding tools if you want to help you keep the items in place. Um, that's always an option. Sometimes I will bring in my little tweezers and just use that to kind of hold down or to pull pieces away while I'm working too. It just really depends on your preference. If you find it easier to use tools or you find it easier just to use your hands. So I'm keeping an eye on what's right ahead of wherever I'm moving, just to make sure that I don't mess up here. Because we want to keep everything in place. And 
And if you're starting to get to the point when you're working on this that you notice that you have a lot of vinyl to keep track of, like we're getting to this point here and it might start rolling up on itself and getting more confusing where you're working, it's okay to completely, you know, take a break for just a second, hold that out of the way, and then just cut away the excess. This is a, a trick that I use if I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed by the amount of extra vinyl I have to keep handy. So we can move that and put that in our trash or recycling. So now we're restarting over again. And that makes it a little easier sometimes when you don't have tons and tons of vinyl that's following you behind where you're working. So it's just an idea to keep in mind while you're working. Especially if you're working with permanent vinyl, I just find it a little trickier to work with than um, removable vinyl, especially just because of how much adhesive is on it. hitting that stage again where my hands are starting to get too much vinyl. So I'm just going to cut right there, move that out of the way. And that way it makes it a lot easier just to come back in and get this bottom section. And if it pulls up a piece that you're working on, just lay it right back down and just hold your hands on top of that. So this was the piece I was talking about that I was a little worried about it coming out of the way um, while we were working. That's why I was working backwards on this decal. There we go. Now if we flip it around, as you can see, we have all these little tiny pieces inside to weed, so we're gonna do that. This is where it comes in handy to have tweezers. You can kind of just roll this slightly. We don't wanna ruin our decal, so we don't wanna hard bend it. We can just kind of slightly roll it, and what you'll see is a little bit of the white peek through. Let me go a little bit more close up so you guys can see. So as you can see, a little bit more white peeks through, and what we'll use is just kind of grab it using the tweezers there, so another little piece. Just kind of roll this so we don't damage our vinyl. And it just helps you to know exactly where that vinyl piece ends. You can also use your hands if you don't have the tools. You can just kind of hold it, roll it a little bit, and then if you have enough nails, you can get in there as well. So let's talk about how we take our decal and transfer it onto the project that we're working on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called transfer tape and this is basically a clear um, sticky medium to transfer the design onto the project that we're working on. So I'm going to move this out of the way for now and what we're going to do is cut our transfer tape to be around about the right size for this. So we're gonna leave a little bit of extra space around the outside. And this is something that people may not realize about Cricut transfer tape, but it is reusable. So if you use something like this for a project, 
you can go ahead and set it aside and still use it again. Um, it can be used multiple times. I believe most people use it, you know, four or five times. If you find it's too sticky for a project, you can always apply this to your t-shirt just to remove a little bit of the stickiness, but still have it be, you know, pretty sticky. And as you can see, it has that grid, which makes it a lot easier um, for you to apply it evenly to your sticker. So the first thing we're going to do is take our project and we're going to kind of make this a V shape um, where we're going to press this down in this, the very center of where we're working and then we're just going to roll this outwards. So that way. And we're doing this to avoid major air bubbles. If you have a little mini spatula from Cricut. This is perfect to work with for this sort of thing. You can also use your hands. It just takes a lot longer to do it that way. Um, when I first started out with my Cricut, I didn't have all of the tools and the supplies that um, people always recommend. So I use a lot of this with my hands and you can still get away with doing that if you need to. But I'm gonna use the little mini um, scraper. And what we're doing is called burnishing. So all I'm going to do is just take this working from the center out and it removes the extra bubbles and makes sure that the adhesive sticks on the top here. I like to go over this in multiple directions, so I'll go over it um, one way and then I'll come back and go over it the other way just to make sure that there's not a bunch of air bubbles and that it's sticking correctly. Okay, when you're ready, you just turn this over. Another trick that you can use if you wanna just extra make sure that everything is um, staying in place is you can do this on the back side of your decal as well. And it just gives you a little more pressure on that front spot to make sure that this is adhered completely to the transfer tape. The transfer tape is very sticky. So what we're going to do is just roll this back and as we're going we're checking to make sure that it is adhered completely. If it hasn't you can roll this back down and um, flip it over and continue the same process again. But that is good to go. And remember, this is the sticky part along the back here, so we have to be careful not to touch this down until we're ready. So here is our project. And what I'm going to try to do is just keep in mind the sizing of this. I want to make sure that this is approximately the same um, gap around the top and the bottom and also the sides. You can measure if you want it to be precise and perfect, um, but if you don't have the measurement, just eyeball it and do the best that you can. So here is the piece that I was working on. And I measured it approximately 10 inches because I didn't want it to be near this gap here. So let's just keep that in mind. And this side is the part I think I'm going to have the most issues with is making sure that it's even on the sides here for the up and down part. So, And as we did before, we're going to hold this in kind of a V shape. You can go from one side and go all the way down or do it the other way depending on if you're right or left hand sided. But I always find it easier to start in the middle and just press it down um, each way so you don't have as much section that you're trying to control. Okay, and we're going to continue the same process that we did before. We're just trying to adhere it from the transfer tape to the backing here. So we're just going to work on this from the center out, making sure to press out any bubbles that have formed.
So we're going to lift the transfer tape off, remembering to check it as we go. Make sure that it's adhered, and if it's not, you can always lay the transfer tape back down and just go back over that spot where there's any spots that aren't um, adhered completely. For troubleshooting, sometimes if you have little spots like this or the little dots, anything that's a very um, lighter spot that has less to grab with, definitely make sure that you go over these ones more um, before you lift the transfer tape. Also, this is something I recommend for anything that has extra texture. Go back over it with a cloth. This works really well if you're doing wall decals, although make sure you're using removable vinyl for wall decals. But if you're doing something like this um, cutting board that has a little texture, use a rag to go over those spots as well. And what it does is it'll just really help that adhesive to sink in and have the best results. And that way you can still hand wash this and not lose um, the decal. Cute, right? Don't you think that fits right into a farmhouse themed kitchen? So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and hit the like button. Leave a comment below, let me know what kind of project you would like to see next, and I can't wait to show you some new ones soon. I hope you're having a great day.